Hello and welcome to episode 42 of the Fish Tank. So, uh, not to be confused with the Kumars number 42, as I mentioned at the end of last week's episode. Uh, I suppose I could call this uh, episode Fish Tank at number 42. Although I'm not actually living at number 42 and I'm not 42 years old, it's just episode 42 of the Fish Tank. And uh, the, 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 the Kumars number 42 is actually transferred to various countries. Obviously, there's the English version with an Indian family on it, there's the American version with uh, a Mexican family on it, hence me uh, wearing this. Mexico football shirt today, as uh, today's shirt of the week, or whatever you like. So it's time for apology of the week now. Uh, on last week's show, I accused Prince Harry of taking drugs and shooting fat birds and various other things. So uh, I'd like to apologise to him. It's uh, no no need to uh, be so harsh towards Prince Harry as a member of our royalty and his second, uh, third in line to the throne. So he could one day be a future king, and I apologise. Of course, uh, it has actually been quite a tough week for him, apparently, because he allegedly, on according to the uh, newspapers on Sunday morning, he split up with his girlfriend, or he's about to split with his girlfriend, Chelsea. Um, apparently she never sees him, which is not actually true. She does see him all the time, but because he's in the army, he's always camouflaged, so she doesn't actually know he's there. For, so for quite a lot of it, presumably she sees a floating head going around, you might say. So apparently he's quite annoyed that he's not allowed to go to uh, Afghanistan with the army and not allowed to serve in Iraq. Um, fairly sensible because you presume he'd be a complete magnet for bullets. And also apparently it cost the army too much. Not in security or anything like that, it's just generally trying to create sun cream that's a factor of 3,000 or whatever. Because obviously he has got ginger hair. So uh, yeah, I, I remember reading about that at, the, uh, at work when I was putting newspapers out. Uh, also... When I was at work, I noticed that because it's what towards Christmas, there is a ridiculously large amount of cards coming out, Christmas cards and stuff like that, which is really getting to annoy me. And the amount of cards you get going out to people, you know, happy uh, happy 90th birthday, stuff like that, it's fairly sensible. And then uh, happy springtime, well done on moving house, we're sorry to hear about the death of your dog. Congratulations on passing your GCSEs. I mean, I suppose if you had a day like or like that with all those events occurring, you probably do deserve a card, but possibly not all individually. That's all I'd say. So, uh, what else has happened? Well, there was a large article the other day about uh, swearing at work. Apparently, uh, it's quite good for you. So, people like Gordon Ramsay, it's quite a good boss because he swears at work quite a lot. But uh, what actually constitutes a swear word is what I want to know. I mean. How, how, how does something become a swear word? If I all of a sudden, in, instead of swearing, I said speakers, because I'm looking at my speakers, I've got a bit of an inspiration from that. If I said that, and I got everyone else in the world to say that when something went wrong, would that now be constituted as a swear word? Interesting thing about how this crops up. So, uh, it's time for your fa- uh, officially your favourite fisher. The uh, bit I launched on the show last week, and... No one actually answered, very annoyingly, because I wanted a bit of interaction with you viewers. I was expecting uh, a couple of answers. I got one answer that actually said, what about Fisher Price? Which wasn't included. It's included on this week's list. So, who is officially your favourite Fisher? Fisher Price, the toy making company. Uh, Division of Fisher, which is an Australian electoral district, as opposed to my uh, football league named after me. Or... Fisher's Engineering, which is one of the top manufacturers of snow clouds in the whole world. So uh, let me know which your favourite Fisher is. Or give suggestions for future Fishers on jimbostudios.com. Well, we've also uh, updated our lookalike section yesterday, so uh, not not sure else you're going to go on lookalikes. If you're a lookalike, submit your name and all that, and we might be able to put you on there. Might be able to have uh, John Seaton looking like Roger Moore, perhaps. Who knows? So it's uh, time for the celebometer as well this week. Um, the new series of I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here started on Monday, I think. So if you were on I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Oh no, actually, sorry. It's Celebometer, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Obviously, I've never heard of anyone I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here, so no, you can't appear. Uh, I saw England Cricket Captain Michael Vaughan yesterday. He can appear. And I also saw uh, Mike Gatting, former England Cricket Captain, who apparently today was discussing the possibility of using pink cricket balls in cricket matches. So I'm not sure why you want to use a pink cricket ball. Perhaps uh, perhaps if you bat for the other team, you might fancy using a pink cricket ball, maybe, without wanting to be too uh, homophobic or anything like that. 
So it's uh, time for time for headline of the week, which are uh, interesting links into balls. And it's uh, from the Guardian. It says, physicists recommend bigger balls to slow down male tennis players. So uh, I don't know. I suppose it could certainly hamper their mobility if they've got particularly big balls. If you think about it, if once they've served a couple, they put them in the pockets as well. They sort of get three balls, put one in the pocket, then they serve it. So uh, if you've got a big ball in your pocket, then that's going to slow you down a bit, I would have thought. So uh, a sensible suggestion there. And it's now time for Quote of the Week as well from Ivana Trump, which is Donald Trump's uh, ex-wife, one of his many ex-wives, I believe. It says, uh, fiction writing is great. You can make up almost everything. Indeed, I think in fiction you can make up pretty much the lot, except from the author's name. Which, to be fair, you can use a pseudonym or pen name, so you can make that up as well. So, uh, yeah, Trump, she's talking out of her, um, well, where Trump comes from, that's all I'll say. And uh, that, that's the end of this week's show, so uh, there you go, I'll see you next week. And remember guys, nostalgia isn't quite what it used to be. So, I'll see you next week. Goodbye. <laughs>